Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and we got a very special show tonight because George and I went to VoiceOver Atlanta last week, and we're still recovering. Uh, I, I did not come home with COVID. I had neither, no neither did I. Cough. I came home clean. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're very grateful for that. We are. And we've got some great interviews from that. And also, if you were there, we'd like to hear from you on your impressions of it as well. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, let's get into the show and what we've got on VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes, VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success, and by World Voices, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Yeah, we just added that little thing with us rotating around. That was part of VO Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> That was so funny, but so great. Yeah. We figured, ah, we'll just throw it in the intro. It's funny. Anyway, we had a great time there. Um, uh, but, uh, to explain to you what we're going to see for the next few minutes is a couple of great interviews that we did to give you a good idea of what it takes to put something like that together. And again, we'd like to remind you, if you are at VO Atlanta, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can actually come on the show and give us your comments, uh, about what you thought of it, you know, yay or nay, or great or whatever. Are and you go uh, back. Yeah. What'd yeah. you like about it versus other conferences you've been to? What maybe you learned? Yeah. There keep were it a minute, a, keep it under a minute, right? Yeah. We're trying we, to keep it to a minute so we keep, can get a lot of people on. Exactly. So, uh, if you want to be on, put it in the chat room and, uh, Jeff Holman will, will direct you all to where you need to go so you can be on the show. Anyway, why don't we get to those interviews right now? And, uh, we'll talk to you right after these. So don't go away. Here we go. And, you know, it's like, I haven't seen you since 2007. I know. I know. We're, we're all, I'm supposed to be meeting clients and meeting my own clients and meeting new, but it's, we're having just as much fun meeting all these, all these vendor contacts, industry folks, and just our colleagues in the business. Right. Well, and of course, you know, after the pandemic, we, we were both suffering from massive hug debt. That's right. Which yeah. which we've been making up for in, in, in the time that we've been here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, it's it's great meeting some, you know, some new vendors and some companies that we haven't talked to before. We're talking to the guys from Rode and they've got that new microphone, the uh the, the, the N uh, NT1 or NT1 Gen 5. NT1 Gen 5, which is the replacement. They told me it's going to completely replace the the NT1s right. and it's the new hotness and it's got USB with this Magic Sauce 32-bit float, I know I've talked about it a bit on the show, but we'll we'll have some time with that mic later on to really explore what yeah. that really means. Yeah. So it's been fun. You know, I haven't been to a big conference in a long time. Well, nobody has. So uh, so it was good that you know we're here and uh, you know explaining to people what we do. You're you know, George the Tech. You know, I'm here representing World Voices as president and getting people to know who we are and. You know, telling them they should join and come to our conferences and all those sorts of things. But how about that one panel? Oh well, there was the one panel uh, that Paul Strequirda yeah the what moderated. Was, what, what was so I was up on stage. You were in the audience. It really, what every, was I really? I should have been the one up there because <laughs> I, I I know how to explain that one a little bit better, maybe so, with more <laughs> attitude. But it was it was about voiceover awards. And, you know, I have a very strict interpretation of that. Voiceover awards is a sign check from your client. Mm -hmm. And that, that is justification and remuneration it, for this. It's getting time. the next job exactly. from that client. Exactly. That's the real Convinced, award. Right. Uh, recognition awards, 
should not have to be paid for. It's like it should be your peers saying this person has done an important thing, you know, or that was a great performance. But the categories are all sort of arbitrary and silly. Um, you know, some people were defending and saying, "Oh, but no, somebody, the, the, you know, the, the Stefan, what's his last name? Um, I never met him before, so but you know, he was an interesting guy." He, Stefan. Yeah, Stefan, the guy, the, the actor who yeah, got the, in yeah. quite a few wars. Yeah, the yeah. multilingual actor, yeah, actor. Yeah, and and he was saying, well, I my business, you know, doubled after I won this this award from from this particular organization. That's kind of a tough metric to really. Yeah, you know, I mean, the fact of the correlation, matter is, causation, blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, but, I mean, he's a, he's a multilingual actor, right. and he's very good. He's got a great voice. Not, yeah, he certainly deserves it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Um, but was that the reason that he got? But what he was yeah. saying was that he marketed in himself using that, saying, you know, as a pseudonym real public relations person to promote himself, saying he won this award. And, and you know, so I, that's what I say about those award shows. Like they are, their real value is as a marketing tool for the actor. Right. It's, it's, it's making yourself feel good. It's yeah. supporting your peers. But at the end of the day, you're running a business and it's supporting your marketing. Right. It's really how I feel it's most important. But I also was glad that they talked about, um, that Rob Siglin Paglia talked about a little issue in transparency about the judges, and, right. and there's a little bit of conflict of interest that occurs, or sometimes a lot. And that was his biggest bit? concern. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, then they were, and then Paul was talking about, you know, I researched this company that's doing this particular thing, and he did not have favorable things to say about them no you know we know paul he, yeah. he's not afraid to name names and and be a little bit uh, stir pot stirring yeah he's not, can be a little divisive but yeah. i think he you know he he had a good point to make yeah but he, he moderated it very nicely you know i mean you know there were other people on the panel you know, rob siglin paglia and karen gilfrey right and uh, and, you, and, and hugh and hugh and hugh yeah and hugh yeah yeah and 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 hugh Hugh you know, being someone representing the the, the actual award right, shows because he runs they, one. Right, but he doesn't charge for running those awards. However, it's all part of a conference that people pay to come to. And that's but an I attraction thought he was, to that. I thought his transparency on that was really good. I thought he's like, you know, this is a part of a three legged stool. He didn't right. use those words, but right. we have this we have these organizations and it this that the awards part isn't profit making, right. but it's part of a profit making venture that right. does help everything else. Right. So I I appreciated that transparency. Right. Yeah, and that was the thing. I mean, they were and Paul was looking for a word and I was sitting there with our, our good friend Larry Hudson and I'm like, transparency. And then Hugh said it. Yeah. And transparency is very important. Yeah. Um, you know, I think with any organization. When you join an organization, what is it that they're actually doing? Are they really working for the benefit of the community? Or are they driving someone to join their organization to market their products to them, of which there is a lot of? It's a delicate balance. Right. But yeah. we just want people to be honest about it. And Absolutely. That's, and that's how it fit in there. So that was that was an interesting panel. Absolutely. And uh, right now, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on at night, you know, there's a lot of Script reading. Yeah. Deb Monroe's performing in the other room, yeah. playing live. Yeah. So it, everybody is saying this has been a great conference. I mean, I mean, it's you been, and I hang out in the vendor area most of the time, but we, we have done through. all the conferences, right? Yeah. We have done all Every, of them. And this almost is, everyone. For, for its scale, and they say, that they say they have surpassed 1,000 attendees at this point. Wow. They're, they're at a capacity now. They're sold out. Yeah. Um, they're keeping it together. <laughs> they're, they're, nothing's falling apart at the seams too much, you know. Uh, yeah. From the from the presenter side that we're on, that that on this end, it's been a very smooth process, and uh, I will be happy to come back. Yeah, I, you know, I'll come back. I mean, the last time I was here, eh, you know, it it got a little monotonous mm -hmm. at times, and uh, of course, the opening the opening ceremonies and all that stuff made me want to sell Amway. <laughs> it was it was a real gung ho rah rah. Yeah. yeah. You know, so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. interesting. But <laughs> but the best part is is really seeing the people we know. Yeah. And the people who are are very, very talented. Because some of the top talent in our business is is here. I mean, yeah. you know, uh Dave Fanoy is here and Scott Parkin yep. 
and Lori Allen. I didn't see Lori, but I know she's here. She's definitely here. I got to have, I got, I was lucky enough to have lunch with her. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, she's doing great. And, um, you know, and, and then I've met some really good people. Yeah. And I got to eat at the Waffle House. Yeah, we ate the Waffle, Waffle House. House. We had breakfast or dinner last night we with Byron sure Wagner was, but... <laughs> and my daughter, Elijah, who we're going to talk to in a little bit. Yeah, it was quite an experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, the White Castle of the South, I think, is the best way to describe it. Yeah, I mean, the food was edible. It was okay. It was Absolutely. an experience. You, you, it's, I just, guess. it's just the people. It's the attitude. It's the way people, you know, it's just a, th a thing down here. Right. But people are real cool. They're real nice and want to help each other out. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was fun. And we were really hungry, and it really didn't <laughs> matter what we ate. That's kind of true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But you know, not to say anything bad about the Waffle House, you know. I mean, they, they, they serve, uh, you know, disaster people when they, you know, there's a disaster. They're open 24 hours a day. If there's a disaster and the place hasn't been knocked down by a tornado, they feed all the, That's right. all, all the disaster work. According right. to Byron Wagner, who That's right. we've learned to, you know, he's right about everything. He does his research. He does. He um, knows his stuff. Well, we've got a couple of people to talk to. Um, one of them here with us, my daughter Elijah, is going to share about the kids program. Mm -hmm. We also have a kind of a VIP yeah. Anna Collins. She's running the whole thing. She is the CEO. Yeah. And she agreed to come on. So we're going to take a break, go round her up, and we'll see what happens. Outstanding. Stay tuned. And we're here with Anna Collins, who is running this whole shebang at VO Atlanta 2023. Has it met all your expectations so far? It has. It really has. Um, it's been a dream come true in many ways and uh, an incredible effort, not only on for me, but from Lynn Norris, Jessica Matheson, Kayla Jackson, and so many other more and incredible ambassadors that have volunteered their time. It's just been, yeah, really a dream come true. And it has definitely met my expectations. How much, how long did it take to really plan this? I mean, it, it, I mean, there were bits and pieces here and there, but, but really pulling the whole thing together, how, what, how, what did it really take? A year. We literally started the week after the last one finished to start negotiations with the hotel, um, do some preliminary work with the vendors to find, you know, to help us bring the vision to life. It has literally been, well, 11 and a half months. <laughs> how, how much of, how much did you feel like we're going to have to do this over again? And how much of it was like, <laughs> this is working, we're just going to, like from from an HR perspective, from uh, operations, how much of it did you have to just start all over, and how much did you get to adopt? Um, ninety five percent, I'd say, was new. Yeah, just because we had different operational methods. Yeah. So, and also um, what worked in some things because we were doing so many new stuff and adding so many like more sessions on a Thursday and a Sunday, oh, right, and yeah. also just you know changing the ticket ticket styles and. Um, we weren't quite sure what the numbers would look like. You know, that's always what you do yeah. when you start planning. You um, hope for the best, of course, and you hope that, you know, you, you pull it off and you meet other people's expectations, not just my own, but, mm -hmm. of course, other people's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I do see familiar folks, faces on, on, on the boots on the ground folks, though. Yes. Like that there's a number of people that are back from years past who are, who are in some of the same of them, roles. Yes. Every single one of them actually reached out. We had a call for volunteers, and uh, all of them said, I want to help. What can I do? And they are my superstars. I really call them because that's literally what they are. We've all said we want to help. We want to contribute. We want, they've all been so generous with their time and they've just been knocking it out. I'm just beyond grateful because they're obviously what help makes everything run. <laughs> well, we knew we were going to see Uncle Roy. Like yes. that's just a gift. <laughs> <laughs> that's the important thing. Yeah, they've definitely been helpful. Like you said last night, you know, if there's a problem, We'll take care of it, and that certainly has been the case. If we ask for something, something has, something has happened. Uh, it's, you know, it's not easy to find good help these days, but but in the voiceover community, you you have a unique community of people that really want to help out. The, the, this is a very large conference. We've got you know what a thousand people here now. Pretty close. I I have noticed that the attitude is a little bit different. It's it got it. It's a little smoother running than we've seen in the past. Um, there's a flow to it that works really, really well. 
and people are really enjoying themselves, and that's that's really that's really important for for something like this. What did it take to really bring all that together, and what kind of ideas, what things did you change? Well, it's quite a question. <laughs> well, the readers digest. Okay, I'll try to keep it short because I'm going to be here for a while. Yeah. Um, well, first off, we you know we started off with great ideas, and I and I did at the first thing I did after we took over was assemble an amazing group of advisory women who are and my husband too, of course. So, you know, not just women, but um, people who were like agents and casting directors and branding and. Also just saying, what would you like us? Because it really is about what your customer wants. And I wanted to make sure we got it as right as possible. So they were all very generous and said, here's some ideas. And I said, wait, did I, I have this idea. Does it look right to you? Because mm. you can plan a great conference, but if you're not planning for your clients that are your customers, which we see every single one of these people as, they're our clients, they're our guests, they're our customers. Uh, so we wanted to make it an experience for them. You can, you can plan an incredible conference, but if you don't plan the right one or the right way, it could come across the wrong way. So mm -hmm. to get it as right as we could, it's not always perfect. I guarantee you that. Well, not, not that we see. It looks perfect from our yeah. perspective. What goes on behind the... Listen, we do this show all the time. What goes on behind the scenes is... Yeah, there's a fire going behind me. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah, right? exactly. That's the idea. <laughs> Never let them see a sweat. So and then starting out from there, then coming up with ideas, then reaching out. A lot of the vendors were brand new. We had to find a group of vendors. I uh, yeah. came back to Atlanta to specifically meet with uh, about 12 to 13 vendors over a couple of days to see who was the right fit for uh, audiovisual, for furniture, for layouts, for things like that too, you know, uh, digital screens, I mean, lighting, everything, you know. So yeah. we got quotes from different companies. Um, <laughs> <Better run out there. laughs> I think I have another battery. Everything <laughs> It was important for you to have a lot of women represented and be a part of this team for you. I mean, yes. it's, you came out at the beginning of the show, who runs the world? <laughs> Girls. That and that was great. I have a daughter, so I don't, you know, for me, that's really fun. And so were you successful in getting a team together that you feel really represents? I really did. I mean, it's, it's important for me to have diversity in everything, um, both in all aspects of voiceover, you know, because I'm not a voiceover person myself. I'm training slowly, but my oh. talents lie more in events. Okay, that's good. So I wanted to make sure from a voiceover perspective and also from a talent perspective, from a cast perspective, from a director perspective that I got as many aspects because I wanted to understand what would be important to the voiceover community, not just what's important to me or to J. Michael, of course. And of course, he understands it very well, but I wanted also to get their input saying, if you're going to a conference, what is something we could do to help improve it? You know, so... Yeah, That's great. and so it, it's also men. I I have yeah. an incredible head of tech, which is you know yeah. Stephen George. I've got Roy Oakelson. Yeah. I've got all these incredible. I've seen Stephen has, and Uncle Roy back is great. He, yeah. It's kind of a staple. Yeah. <laughs> and also they've assembled their great AV team, and I really rely on them to make. I, I'm not a tech person by any stretch of imagination. I just want it to look really good and sound great. And right. but they are the brains behind that part, and I kind of let them run you know as he see fits, and he's just. I mean, unbelievable, amazing. I'm Him glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm glad I get That's to just show up. a lot of work. Up. It is. But the, the AV was very impressive. I mean, the, the big screen and all that. That's not something you would expect to see at a, at, at a you know at a voiceover conference where they're right. usually like you know low budget operations. It's a this high was, level. This one, this was really pro. really impressive. Really yeah. pro. Yeah. I, I was really thrilled when I saw it all put together because of course you hear a lot of quotes and you see a lot of numbers and mm -hmm. I'm not so good at feet because <laughs> we do meters, um, but. The AV company, House of Music, I definitely got a lot of props to them because they were really great to work with and they really helped our vision, mine and J. Michael's vision, come to life. We wanted it to feel, and also the sound really good too because I remember other conferences, I'm like, what did he say? Are you sitting at the back or you can't hear so well? I'm like, we're in a voiceover conference. The sound's got to be good, you know? So, um, and also I wanted people to see things like, you know, from the back, not have to be like squinting or, you know, trying to scramble. If I'm short, so someone's, you know, tall sits in front of me that can mm -hmm. be... You know, can't see so well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And also just, you know, wanted to, we had a, had a vision. We both had a vision of what we wanted it to look like. And it's been unbelievably amazing and to see it come to life. Now, in a big commercial conference like this, it's important to have sponsors. And there's some amazing sponsors here, a lot of, and, and vendors that are, you know, that are showing people their wares and stuff. And the vendor area usually is in a big open room. 
and it's very echoey. And you're like, what? Huh? Having it in a more intimate style the way you have it here was really nice because you, you'll find that the people that are in the vendor area are the people that everyone that George and I know, because we've been going to these conferences for, right. for 15 years. Right. Yeah. And, and so there, those are all our friends and, and, and yet we've met some new ones and we've made a, a bunch of new friends this year. Um, what does it really take to convince people to come and sponsor and to be a vendor here? Well, actually, to be honest, J. Michael actually does a most, like the, the sponsorships and everything too is really his specialty. But um, some people reached out, some people we reached out to. We all send like a, uh, a sponsor prospectus to a lot of contacts and a list of people that we, you know, we'll see if they're interested and everything too. So, yeah, um, it's very much, it's kind of like a, we, we, send out, we send out messages. We like, would you like be interested? If people reach out to us. It's kind of a, a mix of both. Well, it's good because sometimes there'll be you know vendors that are there and they really don't understand the voiceover market it seems that most of the vendors that are at this particular one they all are very very specific to to yeah, voiceover they and all that's seem really important. suited for this industry they we, seem we to definitely really, made it absolutely yeah. clear like what the conference was so there was no uh, misunderstandings there and also a lot of people actually like presenters and also have given us ideas of who they could send it to or who might like to so it's been very much a a team effort in that way. And of course, I got to give a lot of credit to my husband, J. Michael Collins, because he's the one who uh, really, you know, the presenters and the sponsors, it's really been his and the schedule and everything too. I take care of the rest of a lot of the logistics. All, the, too. all the nuts and bolts you're dealing yes, with the logistics. Yeah. I have to give absolute credit to him for that for because that was really a, quite a beast to put together for him. So mm -hmm. He is a force of nature. And if anybody's going to do it, he will. So... Anna, it's been great talking with you, and and congratulations so far. This has been fabulous, and I think it as as everybody gets warmed into it even more, it will continue to run smoothly. So congratulations! Thank you very much, and thank you for having me, both of you. Thank you. And we're back here at Vo Atlanta 2023, uh, talking to lots of great people. We have a very special guest right now because there's a, a program that's running concurrently here for child voice actors. We wouldn't quite consider you a child, but a young lady who youth. I've known since... The youth. Yes. She's one of the youths here. Yeah, youth. It's a young lady I've known since she was in small diapers. <laughs> yes, I've known you for a long time. Um, it's Elijah Whittem. Hello. It's good to be here. Now, you're participating in... You know the young people's program, or what should we call it, the youths program? Call it the kids program. Kids program. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what What have you been doing? What kind of classes and activities have they had? Well, they've basically been just doing like really fun games to like show the basics of voiceover, like uh, little improv games and just fun ways to do like show the warm ups and stuff like that. Like they are showing like there was this one game where it's you. Um, would like basically there's two walls and then you would split into groups and line up on the wall and the person you know teaching it i forgot his name so is sorry. it scott no it wasn't scott, it wasn't scott okay. um it was the person at the end but um you would basically split up in the groups and what you would do is uh it was for the gibberish class for like dungeons and dragons um basically what you would do is you would pair up with people in the lines and then you'd basically have like a normal conversation but like in gibberish like you'd act like you're talking to them but like you're just saying random like random like exactly yeah i love gibberish <laughs> so they have fun things like that to like to basically Teach them the ropes of how things work in voiceover. And, and loosen you up. Loosen you up. Yeah, exactly. Make you guys feel at ease with each other. Just have a good time. And then maybe tomorrow you get to, you know, get a little more serious stuff into. Yeah, exactly. So you, you've been studying voiceover. Well, obviously, most of your life since your, your old man seems to be involved. Osmotically. With, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, of course, now you have, you have that booth at home, which, uh, we're, well, uh, you've, you're moving to Atlanta, but. Having the facility at home was probably cool. She's got two studios, one one in L.A. and one in Atlanta. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, it's always important to have the kids help pay the rent. If they can do it. And in this day and age, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, really the way, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. Yeah. But it, it, it gives you the opportunity to see really what 
this job really involves. And if you can learn it early on, it makes a very easy transition to doing it full time professionally. And uh, do you do you find have you been have you booked any work yet? No, but I did do at least one audition like a month ago, I think. It was for like a real audition. Yeah, like an audition. actual legit audition, which I think was pretty cool. But um, obviously, I didn't get it because we haven't heard back. But I, I, I was, I'm not surprised I didn't get it because there was lots of more very talented people and more experienced people auditioning for the role. And I only have like five months of training so far. So, um, but it, it was cool, like doing the audition, seeing what it would really be like if I was to do like an actual audition for like a show or a cartoon. Yeah. And, Mar- and your coach is Martha Kahn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is that why you're here? Because she's the coach and happens to be running the kids program? Uh, I or guess. is there any other reason why you or came? Or possibly because uh, you sprung it on me last minute and were like, okay, we're going. I already booked the flight and the hotel, so pack your bags. Doesn't sound like you came kicking and screaming. No, I'm definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. There, there, was, there was a brief moment of, of, of shock. Yeah, I, I was think. like, what? You know, being in a large, crowded room of strangers is not your first thing on your list of things to do. But definitely you've, not. You've adapted to it really well. Yeah, I, it's definitely not scary as I imagine it to be. Obviously, because you see, you like to psych yourself out about things like that. But yeah, it's been really fun so far. But yeah, we haven't really seen the kids out there. I mean, they're they've separated off to a totally different. Part yeah, they are. They're kind of sequestered to the to the lower level downstairs, um, and I'm sure there's good reasons for that. Keep them focused and and kind of keep the distractions away, right? Keep me. Do you guys feel like you can really focus down there? There's nobody milling around. There's nobody watching. There's no parents watching. Definitely, because the one of the main reasons why they didn't want uh, parents down there watching their kids doing it was because they didn't want them to feel like they need to perform when they were doing it because they wanted it to be a safe place to make mistakes be themselves be loose with it so but like if there's parents there they they're automatically it's like okay i need to do good i need to perform for them so that 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 took an adjustment for me when you're coaching in my at home in in our studio because i wanted to that the first couple of times i was actually in the room i was sitting on the sofa i was watching listening and and eventually martha's like you should, you should, yeah, you should go. You should go. Let Elijah play and not feel like she's performing, which is the coolest thing. Yeah. Mar- Martha's been really great. At, the more she does this, the more we're seeing that she is really, she understands how to work with kids and, and develop their skills. And the more you do anything, like studying home studios and stuff, the better you get at it. And Martha has really done that. And she's fun to work with, isn't she? Very, very. She's very easy to talk with and be loose with and just have fun, you know? She's not very judgmental. Can't be with kids, you know, which is why the parents aren't allowed in there. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, come on, you can do this better, Jenny. Right. You know, I, you know, I, I work with parents and they're like, got to set up the studio. Let the kids be Take kids. And that's really the best part of it. Yeah. What's, what's, we, we know that voiceover isn't your first passion though. I know this. Uh, no, it was not my first so, choice. So, so what is your first passion, right? What is the thing that you really enjoy doing with I your I really time? enjoy drawing. Uh, mostly like people drawing. I want to learn to do more things like backgrounds and objects and animals and stuff like that. But my main thing is drawing people or portraits. Um, I've definitely put a lot of my uh, passion and time into drawing. Uh, a lot more than voiceover, to be honest. But um, I feel like... I want to try putting a lot more of my daily routine into, you know, reading more out loud because that's what I've been constantly being told to do for, especially for voiceover and stuff is to keep reading, keep reading out loud to, you know, make it easier to read scripts and stuff like that. But, uh, I've definitely put a lot more of my, my passion and interests into drawing. Have you done any animation or tried to do some work like that? Actually, I have. It was just simple animations, but they honestly aren't that good because I don't really know where to start with animation. I actually did take a school class because in fourth grade, I think, before COVID started, they had um, a, an after school problem, uh, program called Hearts. And you could do like extra like clubs thingies. Um, and I chose animation because that was an option. It was actually really fun. Um, it was, we did it on paper. So it was like, it took a while for us to do at least one animation. That's unfortunately all we got to do because that's when COVID 
happened and we had the school had to shut oh, down so we gosh. had to stop it yeah. but it was really fun for the first couple months that i got to do it if you can do animation and voices you can bring your own characters to life which is kind of cool i know my my son does that and you know we he, he fortunately has a father with a voiceover studio as well and you know it, it's kind of fun so what do you what what are your future plans for you know after this are you going to continue to pursue voiceover and uh and then really see if it's something you want to do or something along with a lot of other things? Uh, yeah, I think I would. Because at the beginning, before this convention, I was still kind of in between of like, do I really want to do this? Is this really what I want to do for a while? I think uh, you were worried that committing to coming to this, that there was a little bit of pressure on you. That if your dad's going to bring you to this, that you really have to give this a real go. And I wanted to make sure that that pressure wasn't really that, that you that being here would inspire you to want to keep doing it and not yeah. that being here is like well if you're here you better you better take it seriously you know that kind of thing i didn't think that um honestly i know i had to go anyway but it's it's <laughs> not like it's not like i was like no i really don't want to do this i can't believe dad's making there was me a this. moment where you were there feeling was that. a moment the there moment was... of shock when i sprung it like, on you why would you do this yeah but um no, I think I definitely, after this, really want to give it a go and maybe put a little bit more dedication into it. But uh, I definitely still want to pursue art and maybe also a lot more voiceover. Can, can I ask you something that maybe might feel a little personal? And we can edit this out if you don't like to right. talk about it. Um, you're very new to wearing glasses. How did how did that come to be? Because you were doing okay without them. So where does, why glasses now? Well, how did that come to be? Well, um, I've always kind of had a problem of skipping over words and sentences and, you know, adding words and stuff like that. I also had a problem with the, like, the words would, like, mash together almost because it was like my eyes wouldn't focus on them properly. And um, one day during a session, Martha was like, after the session, you came in and then I overheard you talking about, like, yeah, I think she needs glasses or something like that. Because she keeps on like mixing up words or adding in words or forgetting words or mixing up sentences and stuff like that. Because we were already um, considering about getting me glasses, but we just weren't like, it was like a side thought almost. Not like, okay. oh, we're, we're not actually going to do it, but it's like a possibility. But yeah. I guess after Martha was like, yeah, you need glasses. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll Well, she said she said you should check, have your eyes checked yeah. and, just, and just see, you know, we didn't know. So what was the diagnosis? What, what are the glasses helping you with? Um, it's my eyes like to rest at the sides of my eye sockets where it's like they like to be outwards more than inwards. Um, it's called my eyes are divergent. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the glasses help with that. And it, did you notice immediately? Once you got used to wearing them, did you notice that you could read your lines a little easier? Was it, yes, did it I, before like I actually read any sentences, I kept on like, going like this like seeing the differences of like smaller letters or words that were like farther away but kind of smaller i did notice a big difference actually hmm. uh, it was like way clearer and it wasn't like kind of blurring up just slightly uh, but when i did finally read sentences it definitely did get a little bit easier and um yeah it was it was definitely way more clearer to see the sentences when i when i started back 25 years ago and doing voiceover and I hadn't done any for a while after being in broadcasting. I remember going into a studio to cut some demos and looking at the script going, and that's when I knew I needed glasses too. Mm. I thought I would never be someone that would wear them. But I hate to say that to say that you're destined to wear glasses is not really fair, but you were kind of destined. Yeah. But between me, <laughs> between me and your, and your mom. Yeah, this, mom had glasses when she was, is, since she was three, so yeah, and you sorry about glasses, that. So. Yeah, sorry. It was kind of meant to be. I was just kind of in denial for a long time, so I was like, I'm not going to get glasses. I'm fine. I have two pairs of glasses now. Lashes, it's great talking to you. It's always a pleasure talking to you, especially when you come to the studio with your dad and, uh, and hang out with us. But we're really proud of you for, for looking at this and, and, and seeing that, you know, this is a potential career or part of a career. So uh, congratulations on coming out here and, and sticking with it. Yeah. It, 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 this seems to be really a cool experience and um, I can't wait to do it tomorrow. I just need a good 
good sleep because yeah. I'm very tired after the seven it's been hours. A twelve hour day for you, actually. It's twelve hour, yeah. We started 12. at nine. It's nine now. Well, uh, seven hours of actually being in classes. Sure. But no, uh, yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> very tired. I'm proud of you very much. I love you. Love you too. <laughs>
Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, VoiceOver Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in voiceover or to change something about your voiceover career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in Voiceover. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap. And I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. This is, this is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back. Yeah. It was wonderful hearing from everybody that we talked to at, at VO Atlanta. I mean, there were, there were a lot of. A lot of good conversations that we had with people that we haven't had in a long time. I had a chance to talk yeah. with Jim, James Allberger, yeah. who, uh, who started all of this with the voice conferences back in 2007. Seven? Right. Yeah. I can remember seven because I know I went to the second one. You were there in 2008. That's yeah. how I know it was 2007. Wow. That's, that's, that's where you and I met. So, uh, yeah. It's, 2007 uh, was the one that Don LaFontaine came to. Yes, he did. Right. Was yeah. it in Vegas? Yes. Yeah. Somebody went, asked him while he was there, um, is there room in the business for all these other people to do trailers? And he went, yes, when I die. And oh, unfortunately, boy. he died about and six months later. Isn't so, And bizarre. look at all the guys doing trailers now. But he was a <laughs> special guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. still pretty. It's about the most elite voiceover biz uh, gig there is, I think, is yeah. his trailers still. Yeah. And nobody that was in that room. Well, we'd love to have your comments on, uh, on, on VO Atlanta if you were there. And uh, so we can, we can add you on onto our broadcast here. You know, and, and here's somebody who, uh, you know, who is a regular viewer of our show, and he came up and, right. and then was just there the rest of the weekend. Rob, Rob Ryder. Right. <laughs> Hi, guys. Rob Reader. Reader, writer, raider. <laughs> writer it is. Writer, writer it is. <laughs> Oh man, it was great to meet uh, both of you guys. Uh, it, you know, I've been following your, following the show, and following your admonitions and your training and your suggestions for a long time. As you notice, I'm right there yeah. with the microphone in the right place. But uh, uh, <laughs> boy, George, uh, your daughter, what a what a treat and what a sweetheart she is. And you're so right about Atlanta. I got some friends in the Atlanta production business, and they are just busier than 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 they they're just making money hand over fist it's quite a center i'm glad so, to hear that yeah. good, yeah. good stuff that, out there. her mother her mother moved there for some greener pastures as well you know that's uh -huh. why they're there and she's a photographer so you know yeah. opportunities will be a little bit more forthcoming to her there yeah. i think a little bit less yeah, yeah. And so looking forward to see what yeah. happens well, thank well, you for that yeah yeah what were your overall impressions rob Overall impressions were very strong. First time I've been to to the conference, and the uh, the audiobook track was ex was especially strong with Scott Brick and Suzanne uh, running that, and uh, with uh, Johnny Heller and and all the rest of the folks. I got involved in X sessions with Johnny Heller. Uh, I then went on to APAC in New York, and that's oh, wow. more a networking thing. Oh man, I just I was so overloaded, and I did not get COVID. But um, the, uh, the, the audiobook track was so strong at VO Atlanta. I would highly recommend it for anybody who wants to get involved with that. I stayed at the Drury, ran into Lori Allen, never met her, <laughs> had breakfast with her, which was kind of fun. I did go oh, to the yeah. Waffle House and had <laughs> breakfast at dinner, uh, scattered, smothered, covered, and chunked. <laughs> yeah, that's the Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but, and it was, I mean, just so nice to meet you guys. Ryan White from Road, I got to talk to him, and I'm going to be yeah. announcing an air show in Kansas City, and I'm going to meet with him out there this coming summer. And, uh, oh, cool. And, and the food that J. Michael put out there, the, the two lunches were unbelievably tasty and yep. plentiful. Yep. So, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going back. I never, 
I, I had not initially intended to go. And then my voiceover, excuse me, my, my audiobook coach, uh, Hillary Huber suggested, well, yeah, but we'll have fun. And so yeah. I showed up and I had way more than fun. It was totally worth it. But primarily, I, no, no doubt about it. Meeting you two guys was really, is really a, a, really a treat. So thank you for that opportunity to spend that, that cool. you gave me the time you gave me. We were yeah. all in one, we were all in like one little clustered up group. <laughs> just Jordan sort of shoved in there. Yeah. Dan was over there at Wovo, the Wovo booth. We were all right there. So yeah. really Oh, and I joined Wovo too. So yeah. I'm good job. Part good of the fam. <laughs> That's great to know. So, well, anyway, thanks yeah. guys. I, I don't want to keep you forever. So Okay. We appreciate that. Anyway, but thanks for being there. All righty. If anybody else was there at, uh, at VO Atlanta, we'd love to hear from you and have uh, your thoughts on it. And uh, what, what made it special for you? And what, was it good? Was it, was it this? Was it that? There was so much to it, though. I mean, there were so many sessions. There were a lot of X sessions. You did an X session. You know, I, 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 I think did. for a big commercial uh, production like that, where yeah. you've got all these people in there, I, I suppose the X sessions made sense. What was it right. that, you would, that you did differently in an X session that you, you, know, that you or I might have done at a... Uh, you know, in an hour session or something. Yeah, well, I, I had never gotten to do an X session before, and I hadn't done a three-hour live in-person workshop in a long time. So I honestly, I didn't know exactly the scope of what I wanted, what's going to be able to cover. And so I went into it with um, a slideshow that was kind of a, uh, I call it a mic to MP3. I just had to come up with something. It's, it's an old name I had from used years ago, right? But it was just it was just me answering people's questions and throwing a lot of things at them and seeing how they handle it. You don't know what those 12 people are going to know. You don't know who they're going to be that sign up. You don't know what their skill level is when, you, when they come in. But with 12 people, it really allowed me to make it a very just a free-flowing presentation rather than when I do my remote webinars, my typical online webinars where okay, I'm going to talk for one hour and 20 to 30 minutes or 40 minutes for a really long time, and then I'm going to answer your questions. I wanted it to feel a lot more interactive. I wanted people to be able to interject, ask questions real time, make it feel like we're all in the same room. Let's take advantage of that. So there was a lot of talk about mic placement. Um, you know, after I did a pretty long spiel about acoustics, and really demonstrated how bad acoustics work because the <laughs> conference rooms. I mean, come on, guys. These are rooms made for communication, and they had zero acoustical treatment, just hard surfaces. They were so reverberant. Um, but it was so funny. But, um, yeah, it was a great way to demonstrate acoustics because it was a bad, badly acoustically treated room. And so people got to hear that, and we got to talk a lot about mic placement and really get to talk about people's specific situations what they are using what mic they're using how to make it work better for them so that was neat they're getting really that lot of one-on-one -on -one personal time yeah. and uh so that it, i think it worked out really well yeah well, we shot that bit on friday night yeah and then on saturday was the most fun because that was like we had a an audio masters yeah you know, we like to call them the round table but it was a panel and on it was you, me, Uncle Roy, uh, Larry Hudson, mm -hmm. Dan Friedman, Tim Tippetts, and Dave, whose last name escapes me because I hadn't met him before. But uh, that was great because I think for the most part, you know, I got the first question and it was like, what's most important? I said acoustics and everybody agreed. And I'm like, okay, we can all go home now. Uh <laughs> You know, they, uh, it was, it was great to, to have people who think like we do. And you got to remember that people who actually work with home voiceover studios, we come from a lot of different angles at it and yeah. some have a slightly different attitude about it. Uh, but it's, uh, overwhelmingly we're on the same page as we always seem to find about 80% of the time, maybe more, we're totally on the same page. 20% of the time, we have some different ideas about how we should accomplish the details. And we have a lot of clients who work with all of us or in a mixture of us. Some, you know, some, some have worked with Uncle Roy and Dan and me 
or me and Jordan or me and Uncle Roy and Jordan, you know, like all these different combinations, Tim Tibbetts, yeah. which was great to see him there and, and looking and feeling, apparently feeling much better. Uh, clearly. Um, you know, and, and um, hearing how everybody's worked with all these different people, it, and what happens is when people do this, yeah, they learn a lot, but some folks tend to get hung up on that last 10 to 20% where we have different ideas about how to execute things. And that can get people in a little bit of, not trouble, it just frustrates them. Because then yeah. they're like, well, what really is the right answer? And at the end of the day, we can't all hand it to you. You, you do have to make your own decision. <laughs> That's what the right answer we've is. We've given you a lot of the right information. We've given you some different things. Like somebody came into my... Uh, X session, she said, I was told I should get a Windows computer. You're telling me I should get a Mac computer. Which is the right answer? And all I could do, of course, again, was give her my perspective and my experience. Right. So it, that's, that's the way it goes. You do have to make your own decisions at the end of the day. You're running your own business. You have to steer your own ship. But get the best crew you possibly can. Yeah. And, and Jordan Reynolds ran that ran that particular panel very, very well. He did. Until his wife started to talk. Um, and uh, Mara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where things got interesting when Mara yeah. stood up to, to talk. Yeah. Yeah, and she's Indeed. like asking all of us these very detailed questions. And, yeah. you know, we all look at Jordan and we're like, take it home. Uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what was that? Clearly that Jordan's probably had to deal with with Mara and try to answer for her or try to work with you know, work on with her and she wasn't getting the answers that she wanted from Jordan. So she asked the rest of us. Yeah. Awkward. It, it was very awkward, but it was still fun, <laughs> you know, just lining up for a picture. I mean, you don't get a picture of all of us together like that. Uh, I mean, we are yeah. a very exclusive fraternity. I mean, there's other people that, you know, say they, you know, they work with home voiceover studios and stuff. Well, but, who was missing really that definitely could have been on stage with us was Tim Friedlander. Didn't, yeah. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah. And Cliff, um, Cliff Zellman, Cliff, Cliff who, who was, was there, but he was, he wasn't yeah. in that particular. It was, it was impossible to literally have ever, that's how big of a conference. There's so much going on that yeah. you still can't get everybody on stage. Plus you might have, I don't know if you noticed the very beginning, I was holding a glass of champagne. Champagne. Yeah. So the <laughs> champagne toast was at the same time as our panel. So I grabbed a glass and ran out to do the, to do the panel at the end. <laughs> yeah. You've got a great video of the glass sort of like in front of you the entire time and perfectly. Aimed. Oh, Jeff Gelder is in the, is yeah. in the chat. Jeff Gelder. Yeah. Can, Jeff, can you jump in Jeff? Yeah. Winner of the unicorn award for uh, his I annual holiday CD. Hi. Yeah, yeah, that would be, yeah, the Unicorn Award was, I mean, I have video of that whole thing too. It's 26 minutes long. Um, oh. it, it's really long. Trey yeah. is saving his voice. He's just getting over, oh, damn, Trey. Trey, Trey, who's been a watch, we've known Trey. He's been a fan of ours forever. Yeah. Um, he was there. We got this, I got to say hi to Trey. He says, I'm saving his voice getting over COVID. Damn. Yeah. A number of people came down with COVID. That's, I mean, that's the thing about a conference now is, yeah, yeah if you're careful, uh, you know, you wash your hands, you don't get too close to people, you're not going to get COVID. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I, I we're, you know, we've got WovoCon coming up in a month, exactly a month, and uh, it's, uh, you know, we're we're trying to come up. What's the policy going to be? And uh, we're thinking, you know respect other people if they're wearing a mask and you know don't make right. a political thing out of it uh right. you know people are entitled to uh you know protect themselves people that wanted to protect themselves wore a mask i mean it's yeah. different in every city in la it's it's you're free to free to do your thing if you want to wear one you when you when you don't want to wear one i think a lot of these conference halls conference spaces people are very are becoming after three years of this getting accustomed to some people have a mask on some people don't have a mask on. Right. If you can't handle that at this point, just don't even show up to any it, conference. Indeed. That's indeed. my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a great show. Anyway, we, great. we're going to take a break here and we're going to come back and wrap things up for this particular hour and then rack it for Tech Talk. And if you got a question for Tech Talk, throw it in the chat room now because, George, and I love getting questions about home voiceover studio tech. So we'll be right back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. So don't go away. You're still watching VLBS?
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, I got to tell you guys a story. About 10 years ago, my good friend Joe Davis gave me a call. He says, what can I do for the voiceover business? Now, Joe is a webmaster. He was primarily designing websites for Midtown Manhattan law firms. And he's like, I want to help the voiceover business. What would work? And I said, you know something? And this is the way I stated it to him. Your voiceover website shouldn't be a pain in the ass because it takes forever to create a website. You got to talk to your webmaster. They'll charge you 25 bucks for adding a comma. And then people start to become very elaborate in it. And all you really need is your name, your, uh, your demos, your contact information, and a nice background. And if he could create something that was templated, that would be a lot easier. So 10 years later, no, he started voiceactorwebsites.com and where we were doing, uh, they were they were somewhat templated, but people could design their websites. And after 10 years, now he has 30 people working for him. But now we have voiceactor, voiceactor.com, which is... It's it's amazing because look at all the different templates that are in there. All you have to do is go in there and you can do it for free to start. That's right, for free. If you go into the uh, into the homepage here, you can build it your website in minutes and you can get started for free. Uh, there, you know, and then it's not really all that expensive, but twenty dollars a month to have your website the way you want it and. Not only that, but it also includes where it gets hosted. So you're on like that. And George and I started started using this, and it was absolutely amazing because we were able to do it literally in 10, 15 minutes. And we had a website. We had a website for, for Elijah. We had a website for my son, Jacob. And there it was. So if you want to try it, go try it free over at voiceactor.com. That's voiceactor.com. Let us know how it goes for you. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as WOVO. WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the a chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. All right. Well, we got time for one more person who was there who was greatly honored, and that was Jeff Gelder. Jeff, how you doing, man? I'm good. Can you see me? Yeah. We can see you. We can hear you. You have 60 seconds. Go. <laughs> what were your thoughts? Aside from winning the Unicorn Award, which had lots of benefits to it. Uh, what was, was what was your impression of the conference? That was definitely my favorite part, I have to say. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> but uh, 
it, I thought that it was phenomenal. This is my first VO Atlanta ever. And uh, from what I've heard, it was the best one so far. Um, I hate to say it, but I think they might have raised the bar on the Wovo. <laughs> well, uh, they're two well, different things. So. Right. We'll have 100 people. There was 1,000 there. So ours will be a little bit more That's intimate. Perfect, though, so yeah. yeah. No, I just I was excited about that. They had a lot of different speakers that I'd never seen in the last 10 years of going to places like that. The camaraderie, the love in the room was huge for sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it was great seeing you there. And it was great watching you win the Unicorn Award. How are you going to use all of that stuff that they gave you? Oh, my God. You know, it's a little <laughs> overwhelming. I'm still like, I after they read the list for about 30 minutes, I shut down. <laughs> and just I don't remember what's on that list. We're about to get into it, I think, in the next few days and figure out who gets what and how that works. But already I've got this wonderful $1,000 donation to the charity from Deborah Wilson which is, you know, amazing. So those are the best parts of it. But it's yeah. exciting to revamp, you know, some of the studio and the, yeah. the career and go to some other conferences and make some new demos. And everything I wanted to do in that great. <laughs> That's great. Incredible. Yeah, and, and it's helping out your, your charity for the, the annual holiday CD that you guys give out, and that's a really cool project. We'll talk more about it, uh, you know, and you know, we'll, as we go towards the holidays, we'll talk yeah. to you about it and maybe, maybe we can help promote it. Thanks cool. for being with us. I want to thank George too for the video. That was awesome to be able to see what happened without remembering. <laughs> yeah, it was like behind you off to the side in this other yeah. perspective. So you got to yeah. watch the whole thing. It was like an out of body experience. It was really surreal. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Thanks. Uh, all righty. Well, it's that time to say goodbye and get, oh, get revved up for Tech Talk. If you got a question for Tech Talk, we do it live. And if you're watching live, you get to ask your questions, and that's what we want to hear from you. So we'll get to that. In the meantime, so next week, you're going to hear your questions answered on Tech Talk number 100, ooh, if you can ooh, believe ooh. that. Yeah, 100 yeah. Tech Talks. My God. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. We need to thank our donors of the week, like Grace Newton, who I know is watching. Hey, Robert Leadham. Steve Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. Hey, Dr. Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. Hey, Martha, my dear. 949 Designs. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Rader. Writer, reader, reader. Shuna Pennington Bard. <laughs> Don Griffith. <laughs> Trey Mosley. Hey, Trey. Diana Birdsall. And Sandra. Man Willer. All right. Hey, join our mailing list, too, so you know what we're going to be doing on this show uh, every week because I send that out and you get to find out what's going on. Uh, we need to thank our wonderful sponsors Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com. And, and World Voices. The, that's right. We are the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. Join us today. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman for getting everybody together in the chat room. And of course, Sue Merlino for getting it done from the switchboard. And, and of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, look, this was an interesting show. You got a little bit of a flavor of what View Atlanta was about. Maybe you want to go next year. You know, and, and hopefully not get COVID, but also learn an awful lot about the voiceover business, which is why we're here every week doing what we do to help you out with your home voiceover studio and your voiceover career. So make sure you're here for that. Anyway, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. Close enough. Stay tuned for Tech Talk.